AQA, A-level physics, and this video, constituents of the atom. This is the first video about particles and radiation. Very much GCSE revision, nearly all of this video. Uh, this is the bit of the specification we'll be looking at. So an element is a substance <clears throat> that is made of one type of atom. So there's 92 types of atom naturally occurring. There are 92 elements and you can see them all here in the periodic table. And in the periodic table, it puts the elements in order of mass, starting with the lightest, and it puts them in groups based on their properties. So uh, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium in order of mass, and then they are in group one, group two, etc., based on properties. A simple model of the atom. Our model of the atom will get a bit more complicated later, but the simple model is you've got a nucleus, a very, very small nucleus, and then you've got electrons in orbit around the nucleus. In the nucleus, you've got protons and neutrons. They've got a, a relative mass of one, um, and the electron's mass is much smaller. It's about a two thousandth of that. Uh, protons have a positive charge of plus E. Electrons have a negative charge, minus E. Neutrons are neutral. All very basic stuff. Here's the first 20 elements. Uh, when I was in um, about year 10, year 11, I learned this. Harry Henry likes beer by cupfuls. Very useful. Anyway, first 20 elements, you see these numbers. Uh, the big number is the relative atomic mass of an element. Uh, and the small number is the atomic number. Now, the atomic number is a whole number. And it's strictly speaking, in the table, it's just whereabouts on the table it is. One, two, three, four, number one, number two, number three, number four. OK, uh, the relative atomic mass isn't necessarily a whole number. In fact, it usually isn't, um, depending on how many significant figures you do, uh, because of isotopes. Because each element has different isotopes and the relative atomic mass is an average for all the different isotopes. This is a table of isotopes. Now, isotopes of the same element have the same number of protons. So on this part of the table of isotopes, I've highlighted boron. And all of those are, there's, looking at them, I'll get my pen out. You know, there's that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. And they're all isotopes of boron. And they all have the same number of protons, okay? Which is one, two, three, four, five protons but they have different numbers of neutrons, okay? Now also, uh, these two here, they are stable. And that basically means that they are well made, they are not gonna fall to bits, they will, uh, unless they happen to end up inside a star, they will last forever, okay? They are stable. 80% uh, of stable boron is this isotope, let's go green, is this isotope here, that's about 80%, about 20% is that one. Now, these other isotopes are not stable, they are unstable. And that means that at some point in the future, they will decay, they will fall to bits, okay? They are unstable. The ones on the right over here, uh, are probably unstable because they've got too many neutrons. Uh, the ones on the left uh, don't have enough neutrons. Okay, so they will decay in different ways. So uh, a few isotopes are stable, lots of isotopes are unstable. And find this table of isotopes, Google it for all of the elements, it's very interesting. Now we're going to use this notation for a particular isotope. If we're talking about an isotope X, then the number at the top, we call it the nucleon number uh, because it's the number of particles in the nucleus. So that's protons and neutrons, the nucleon number. 
uh, and then we have the proton number which is Z uh, and that's just the number of protons so this is if we are talking about a particular isotope there's another number we will use much later on which is the the neutron number and the neutron number is the nucleon number minus the proton number so for example <clears throat> Uh, boron, about 80% of boron is 11,5. Uh, that means it's got five protons and six neutrons. Atomic mass units. Now, I said these were relative masses. We're going to use for very, very, very small masses when we're doing stuff with atoms. Uh, we're going to use uh, atomic mass units. Now, what is an atomic mass unit? Well, it's, uh, it's defined as it's a twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So a carbon-12 atom has a mass of 12 atomic mass units. And that basically means that a proton has a mass of one atomic mass unit uh, and a neutron has a mass of one. OK, so protons and neutrons have the same mass almost actually depends how many sig figs you use uh, electrons have a mass which is about a two thousandth of an atomic mass unit uh, in kilograms that works out to for the proton 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 for an electron 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 you'll be given that in an exam you don't need to learn that but an atomic mass unit is just a very very small very convenient unit of mass. Something else we need to know, specific charge. And the specific charge means the charge of a particle divided by its mass. And you might need to work out the specific charge of a, a proton or, or an electron or an ion. Uh, have a go at these examples just divide the charge by the mass coulombs per kilogram and the answers are in three two one hopefully you got those <laughs> 